3D graphics might look really complicated, but actually it's not that difficult to learn. By the end of this video, you'll be able to build your own 3D graphics engine from scratch. Imagine you're looking out a window with a grid on it. Outside is a tree and light rays are coming from the sun, bouncing off the tree and going into your eyes through the window. Each time a light ray passes through a square, it colours that square in. So it slowly builds up a pixelated image of the tree. As we move further away from the window, that narrows our field of view, because now light rays passing through at an angle can't reach our eyes, but light rays passing directly through the window can. This creates the effect of zooming in and out of the image, and you can try this on any window. If you step further away from it, you'll be able to see less, so it will almost zoom in to what's in front of the window. The distance between your eye and the window is called the focal length, and this is how cameras adjust the zoom by changing the focal length. Now if we move the eye back to where it was, and this time we move the tree away from the window, what happens is the light rays that pass through the window now pass through at a lower angle. This makes the tree appear smaller in the window, and this is why objects that are further away look smaller than objects that are close up. So in order to render something in 3D, we just need to render this 2D grid, where each cell in the grid is another pixel on the screen. Let's simplify this model by just looking at two dimensions. We've got the x-axis coming out of the board that way, the z-axis going to the right that way, and then the y-axis, and then the y-axis going straight up that way. So we're looking at this point P. This is our window, so we want to find out where this line intersects our window. I'm going to call this IY or the Y coordinate of the image. Now this length up here is the Y coordinate of the point P and this length along here is the Z coordinate of the point P and this little section here is the Z coordinate of the point E. Now because these are both right angles and both triangles share the same angle here that means that this angle up here must be the same as this angle here, which means that these two triangles are similar. Okay, so the ratio between that and that is the same as the ratio between that and that. So this little triangle here is similar to this large triangle, and the base of the large triangle is going to be the z-coordinate of P all the way along, subtract this uh, z-coordinate of E. So we've got PZ minus EZ. So because we know that these are similar, that means that the ratio IY to FL is the same as the ratio PY to PZ minus EZ. So to solve a ratio, we're going to turn it into a fraction. IY over FL equals PY over PZ minus EZ. And now we can multiply by FL to get IY on its own. So we get IY is equal to PY times FL over PZ minus EZ. So far we've only dealt with the Y direction. So what about the X? Well what we have to do is rotate this round so that the Y is coming out from the top and then the X is going to be coming out this way from the bottom and the Z is still going to be going that way. So I've just rotated it around but it all works the same only this now becomes PX and this is now IX. So this is similar to this. Using the same logic, we can write an equation. And we can write this as a fraction. Now we just multiply by FL to get IX on its own. And voila, there's our equation for IX and IY, which shows us the X and the Y coordinate of the image of our point. So let's go put it into Desmos. Right, so open your browser, type in desmos.com, and then click on Open Graphing Calculator. This is where we're going to build our 3D engine. So now I'm going to plot the points of a cube. I'm going to call them P1. Uh, I'm going to write square brackets to make it into an array. And I'm just going to start with 1, 1, 1. So this cube is going to be centered at 0, 0, 0, and it's going to have a side length of 2. Feel free to pause the video now to copy all of this into Desmos. Now that we've put in some coordinates for our cube, we're going to need the focal length. So just type F underscore L, and then equals, and then 5. 
So that will be our focal length and the coordinates of the camera. So in square brackets, 0, 0, and then minus 10 should be enough. So this is going to be a little bit further away from the cube. It's going to be about 10 units away from the cube. Next, we're going to need a function where we can put in a point and it will output it onto the screen. So we're going to use D of P. So P is our point equals and then it's going to create a coordinate, so a point, and that's going to be d sub x, or d underscore x of p, and then on the right hand side it's d underscore y of p, and that will be our function to display a point. So i subscript x is equal to the focal length multiplied by the x value of the p, the point p, all over the z value of the point p, minus the z value of the camera. Now you can't just use px and, and cz to refer to the z coordinate because we've put these in as arrays and the reason that we've done that is because this is a two-dimensional graphing calculator, not a three-dimensional one. So Desmos won't understand x, y, z, right? So we need to put in the index instead of the z coordinate which is the third one in the array so we're going to put square brackets and then three and then for the x coordinate that's going to be a square brackets and then one and that now should work so for the y it's the same equation only it's now p2 instead of p1 and we've got the same thing on the bottom so now finally to display a point we just need to type d of P, so D of P1, and then boom, that's our displayed version of point 1. So to display all of them, we're going to make a new array, and then in the array we're going to put D of P1, D of P2, D of P3, all the way up to P8. And there we have it. That's our cube. I'll admit it's, it's a bit of shit. So this is actually a cube, and if you get something that looks like this, then you're on the right track. So let's try and move the camera up and down or left and right. Currently, we can only see one side of the cube, and if we want to see all six faces, we have to move the camera around. We can move the camera, but only back and forth on the Z axis if we change this CZ value here. But let's say we want to move it up and down. If we have a look at the original diagram and elevate the camera by C sub Y, the dimensions of the right angle triangles changes. This is still the focal length. And this is still i sub y, but this now becomes py minus cy, and this is still pz minus cz. So we can use this to write an equation using ratios, and then solve the ratios using a fraction, and then multiply by fl to get this. iy equals fl multiplied by py minus cy over pz minus cz. And for ix, it's the same thing only swapping the y's for the x's. So the only thing that really changes for our equations is that this time we're going to subtract the x value of the camera and this should allow us to change the position of the camera. There you are, yep. So this should now look like this where you can move the camera. Just like how there's an x, y and z coordinate for position, there's also three types of rotation, pitch, yaw and roll. Pitch is rotation about the x-axis and can be used to point a camera up or down. Yaw is rotation about the y-axis and can be used to point the camera side to side. And Roll is rotation about the z-axis and can be used to tilt the camera clockwise or anti-clockwise. We're not going to use Roll today because it's often unnecessary in 3D rendering. However, Roll can be implemented in much the same way as Pitch and Yaw, so maybe that can be your homework. Let's start with Pitch. So in order to rotate the camera upwards, we're going to rotate everything else around it downwards. So looking at it from this angle, it should look something like this. To rotate this point around the camera, we're going to use something called a rotation matrix. Skip to this part of the video if you already know what a rotation matrix is. All right, everyone, sh shut up. I'm your teacher for today. Harry, sit down. No one wants to see that. So today we're learning matrices. A matrix is basically a grid of numbers like you see here. And we can multiply matrices by points to do stuff to those points. So for example, this matrix here should enlarge this point around the center with a scale factor two. So it should stretch it away with a scale factor of two. So let's see what happens. So to multiply a matrix by a point, we first need to turn that point into a column vector. Does anyone remember what a column vector is, you stupid git? So that's a column vector for one, two. Just basically put it vertical. 
and then we're going to multiply the rows of this by the columns of the second matrix. It's always the rows of the first multiplied by the columns of the second. Don't get it the wrong way around. And you multiply the first by the first, so that makes 2 times 1, which is 2. And then the second by the second, which is 0 times 2, which is 0. And you add them together, okay? And that's our first number in our answer matrix here. Next, we're going to multiply this row by this column. So first one times the first one is 0 times 1, which is 0. And the second one times the second one is 2 times 2, which is 4. Now we're just going to simplify this matrix. 2 plus 0 is 2. 0 plus 4 is 4. And that is our answer. All right, so this is the rotation. Harry, if I have to tell you one more time. So this is the rotation matrix. And if you multiply this matrix by any point on this plane, it'll rotate that point theta degrees anti-clockwise about the center okay so let's say we want to rotate this point 60 degrees about the center so we put in theta equals 60 degrees so when we evaluate it cos 60 is a half and sine 60 is root 3 over 2 when we multiply this by the column vector 1 2 we should get it to rotate 60 degrees that way so we're going to do row times first column so the first numbers is at 1 times a half which is 1 half and we've got minus root 3 over 2 times 2, which is minus root 3. Next, we've got root 3 over 2 times 1, which is root 3 over 2. And then we've got a half times 2, which is plus 1. And that should be the point which is 1, 2 rotated 60 degrees anti-clockwise about the centre. So this was the rotation matrix in 2D, but today we're going to be working in 3D. There's actually three ways to rotate something in three dimensions. There's around the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis. And each of these rotations happens looking against the axis. So for example, the x-axis is pointing that way into the board. So we're going to look this way, and the rotation's happening like that. Let's say we want to rotate everything 45 degrees anti-clockwise about the y-axis. So the matrix that we're using is this one here. I'm going to put in theta equals 45 degrees. So that's what our matrix looks like. And then when we evaluate everything, we get root 2 over 2. So just like last time, we're going to multiply this by a column vector. Let's pick a random number, minus 2, 1, uh, 4. And this point here is going to be rotated 45 degrees anti-clockwise about the y-axis. So just like last time, we're going to do the rows of the first one multiplied by the columns of the second one. So root 2 over 2 times minus 2 is minus root 2. 0 times 1 is 0. And root 2 over 2 times 4 is plus 2 root 2. Now once we simplify that, we get that cancels to make just 1 root 2. That's 1. And that is 3 root 2. So that point there is that point just rotated 45 degrees about the y-axis. Hopefully you understood that. Harry! In order to perform this rotation, we're going to use a rotation matrix. But the problem is a rotation matrix only rotates around an axis. It won't rotate around a camera. So in order to rotate P around the camera, we're going to have to translate everything so that the camera is at the center, then perform the rotation and then translate everything back so that the camera is in its original position. So first we need to translate everything by vector v. And vector v is just defined by the position of the camera. So the first step is we take p and then we subtract v. The next step is to actually perform the rotation. So we multiply the rows by the columns. Now the last step is to add v back onto it to return the point back to its original position. So at the end, we've got P dash dash plus CX, CY, CZ. And that is our final image. So now we can add these coordinates as a function in Desmos. So in Desmos, we're going to create a new function. I'm going to call it R1. So it's taking in a parameter, which is a point, And this point here is actually three numbers, A, B, C. And what we wanted to output is a different uh, set of coordinates x y z which is going to be the rotated version of our original uh, point p so this is our point p 
and then once we get an output, so our first one, looking at our equation, is px, which in this case, in Desmos, is p1. The next one is going to be cosine theta, but we're not going to use theta, we're going to use alpha because Desmos gets a bit confused when you put theta in. It starts to think that you're doing uh, polar equations, so we're going to use alpha. Just type ALPHA and then an alpha symbol should pop up. And then we're going to do PY minus CY and then plus sine alpha and then PZ is p3 minus cz c3 and then plus cy so that's our second point that's our second uh, our y component and then lastly on the bottom we've got sine of alpha times cy minus py plus cosine of alpha times pz minus cz plus on the end cz so in here we're going to rotate each of these around and then we have to add a slider for alpha now um the range so if we if we slide these around you'll see it is rotating so you should get something like this um but you'll see it's rotating very very quickly so just click on it and set the range to minus pi over 2 and then pi over 2 and you can get pi by typing pi so we're going to repeat this for yaw. The first step is to transform everything by the vector minus v. Next we're going to rotate anti-clockwise about the y-axis. And then the last step is to add on the vector v. So we get, and now we can put that into Desmos and rotate around the y-axis. So now we're going to add our second rotation. So let's have a look at the blackboard. So we multiply that by px minus cx plus sine beta p z minus c z and then lastly plus c x okay now the next point is p y and that just doesn't change so that's just p2 and then we've got sine beta c x minus p x plus cosine beta p z minus c z and then lastly we're going to add cz to the end so there's our second rotation and if we go back into the display function here we're going to do the second rotation after the first one and you'll notice it's added, asking us to add a slider for beta so we add a slider for beta and then you should be able to look left and right so that's the left right up down and we can also move the camera as well. Now we can move the camera around. I want to also be able to rotate the cube because it's a little bit boring just having a stationary cube. So let's rotate the cube about the y-axis. So we're going to use the rotation matrix again and we're going to rotate the points p, x, p, y, p, z. Now let's put that into Desmos. So for the third rotation we're going to do the same thing as before. Just define a new function r3 of point p and it's going to create a new array. p1 cosine r plus p3 sine r and then nothing changes with the y coordinates and then with the x coordinate we have pz cosine r minus p px sine r there you go and now the cube just rotates around the center and we can hit play and that's a rotating cube so in desmos we can turn these into faces and i'll show you how you do that now so if we say this is big f so these are actually, these are our vertices, aren't they? So we'll call this big V, and then we're gonna use polygon. Then you get something like this. Feel free to pause the video and copy this into your Desmos. Now if we rotate the cube, we can see all six faces of the cube. So uh, let's uh, stylize this. If you go into the settings up at the top, then you can take the grid off, you can take the axes off, and now we've got just the cube by itself. And if you lock, if you like, you can also do reverse contrast, which turns it into dark mode, makes it like a nice little disco cube. So yeah, that's how you create a 3D engine in Desmos. Hopefully you learned something new. If yours didn't work, then go into the description and you'll see a link to my Desmos 2D calculator, and you can just copy that for yourself. Or you can click here to watch more. Now, f off.